Today we're going to take a look at the Samsung 2.1 channel soundbar system with wireless subwoofer. The model number is HW-F450. Now this is a recent release in 2013 from Samsung. As I mentioned, it is a 2.1 channel system with a wireless subwoofer. It's depicted here. Here's the sound bar with the left front channel, right front channel, and then of course the wireless subwoofer. Samsung released this product with a price point of just under $310. We're going to take a look at this, give it a review, and see if maybe it's a product you'd be interested in. Now we want to highlight that in this picture the flat screen television is mounted on the wall, the sound bar is mounted on the wall as well, right below the television, and we're going to take a look at that mounting hardware in just a bit. And then the sound bar sends a wireless signal to the active subwoofer, and I mention the word active because the subwoofer has a built-in amplifier, and that's important compared to a passive subwoofer. Sometimes when you buy a home theater system in a box and it comes in a kit and the price is a little bit less than this $300, $310 price point, you're getting a passive subwoofer. What that means is that particular subwoofer does not have its own amplifier built in. Well, that's not the case with this particular product. It's an active subwoofer, so it's going to allow you to enjoy the power of tight thundering basses when you're watching your favorite shows. This particular unit is Bluetooth capable, so if you have another Bluetooth device, you can share content from that device to this soundbar subwoofer setup. Samsung has incorporated in 2013 what they call Smart On technology. If you purchase a 2013 Samsung television, then the remote control, when you power up your television, automatically powers up this particular Samsung with wireless subwoofer system. That's nice. One remote control and it's easily controlled without a lot of confusing extra remotes. Another option built in if you happen to have Samsung devices that have Samsung's proprietary AnyNet feature you can share content that's stored on those other devices onto your Samsung television so it makes it an easy way to incorporate those media onto your large screen television. Now keep in mind in order for AnyNet to work all of the devices that you're hoping for AnyNet to work must have AnyNet built in and only Samsung builds AnyNet into their product. It's proprietary to the brand. Let's go over the dimensions of this product. The speaker bar itself is 35.7 inches wide 2.8 inches tall and 1.8 inches deep. Now, when you add the mounting hardware, which is supplied and we're going to look at, that's going to increase that depth by just a little bit. You'll need to take that into account when you're considering your installation application. Now, the subwoofer itself, it stands 14.2 inches high. It is a total of 11.6 inches deep and then it is 7 inches in width. We're going to quickly highlight some of the important specifications. The total power output of this system is 280 watts. It's going to sound pretty good at turned up volumes, uh, but it is really designed to enhance the speakers that are built into your TV as well as give you the immersive surround sound effect when you're watching a movie or sports program. Now it does have 3D Plus and Lip Sync built in, so it's going to pass through any sort of uh, CD related audio, I'm sorry, Blu ray 3D audio related track to your uh, display, your television display, and it has Lip Sync. So sometimes um, when you're watching a program, you might notice that the when, when an actor's lips are moving, the sound coming from the speakers doesn't match their lips and Samsung has tried to create ways to fix that particular problem with their uh, proprietary what they're calling lip sync service. Of course this process is Dolby Digital and uh, I mentioned the 3D sound it does pass that through. If you're interested in 
listening to some of your audio content, some of your music content on this device, you can. Here are the supported formats. WAV, MP3, and WMA, <coughs> correction, WMA. Now we're going to look at some of the connectivity on the back of this particular soundbar system. It comes with a audio input. There's an audio return channel. We'll explain that. There's one HDMI input and one HDMI output. So if you have a television set-top box from your satellite company, cable company, or what have you, you can take their HDMI out, pass it through this sound bar, enjoy that immersive surround sound and thumping bass through the subwoofer, and then pass that video signal up to video and audio signal up to your television. It has a USB port. It's wireless ready. That's interesting. We'll take a look at that. Works with the iPhone. Has Bluetooth built in. The sound share, which I mentioned earlier, is proprietary to Samsung related products. And the auto power link. Now that's only uh, functional in the 2013 series Samsung televisions. Here's what you get when you purchase this particular package. It comes with the remote control and the two AAA batteries. Here's the bracket wall mount. So you would secure this little bracket to the wall just below your television and then the sound bar slips right into those little mounting slots there. Samsung was nice enough to provide a user's manual and then they have an auxiliary audio cable and they have a USB cable so this would be for connecting a USB type device and then they have this magnet. Now this magnet simply goes on the power wire of the subwoofer and they indicate that right here. That just helps to reduce any potential uh, noise from being induced onto the subwoofer so that your sound is more clear. This is a product that's commonly provided with electronics uh, regardless of the manufacturer. So let's take a look at first the front panel of the soundbar and that's depicted right here and there are only two items to note. One is the remote control sensor window. So this does come with a remote control and the sensor window is concealed right here. And number two, this is just a display so it's going to let you know when the sound bar is turned on and when it's turned off. Now let's flip the sound bar around and take a look at the back side of the sound bar and we're going to start on the back side left now if you happen to be in the room and you were looking at it, it would be the back side right. But here is some connectivity on the back side left side of the sound bar. And we're going to start from the top and work our way to the bottom. Now at the top is a manual power button right here. And right below that is the function button. So you can select your source input or sound field to change it. You know, if you're listening to the news, you don't want this echoey sound. And if you're watching a movie, you know, you want that immersive surround sound and you want echoes to present themselves. So you would be able to change that manually with the function key. Now, keep in mind, you have a remote. You can do it with the remote. But if for some reason, you know, the remote doesn't work for you or you lose it, you still have these manual buttons right here. Uh, a little bit below that is the volume up and volume down and then right here on the edge is a USB port. Now if you look at this portion of the soundbar right here you have connections for audio. So number seven is a digital toss link. What you would potentially want to connect here, well you could connect a variety of devices here. Now keep in mind this is only an audio connection point. It's not a video connection point. So if you have a set-top box, a digital set-top box from your cable company, your television provider, and you want that audio to pass through, you can just connect the Toslink cable. It, the Toslink cable does not come in this package. You have to purchase it extra. And a Toslink cable, they run, you know, $10, $20, somewhere in that range. It's, it's one, just plug in one here and one on the other end. And then, of course, they have the auxiliary uh, audio input. This is an analog audio input. You could connect a CD player. You could connect your set-top box from your television company. 
So comparing these two, this one is digital. This is going to provide cl more clear sound. And this is analog. Uh, both are going to perform the same function with the audio connection. Number seven is going to be a little bit better. Number eight is more common. Everybody has an analog audio uh, output device, whether it's a CD player, you know, a gaming station, etc., etc. Now Samsung does provide you this particular cable in the package. So if you don't have number seven and you don't want to go out and buy it, you can use what they provide you, assuming, of course, uh, you find that the cable is long enough to reach over to your equipment. And that cable is probably about three feet long. Okay, so what we're going to do now is look at this portion of the sound bar right here. We're almost in the middle of the back panel of the sound bar. And here are your HDMI ports. And, and Samsung did this really smart. They turned these ports to the side so the connector comes out this way and it allows the sound bar to mount really tight to the wall and makes it a clean looking installation. This is going to look really, really good on your wall. You can set this on a cabinet, by the way. You don't have to mount it on the wall. But if you prefer to mount it on the wall, by all means, you can. So looking at these connections right here on the back panel, these are the HDMIs. One is an HDMI in, one is an HDMI out. So you might want to connect your set-top box here. You might want to connect a gaming console, just as long as it has an H available HDMI output. You might want to collect, connect a uh, Blu-ray player here as well. I mentioned it comes with a remote control. I'm not going to bore you with all of the uh, buttons. They're fairly common, power, volume volume up, volume down, channel, things of that effect. But there's the remote. And if you want to take a closer look at it, by all means, pause the video, look at it, and then please restart. Hey, that about wraps up this review of the Samsung HW-F450 2.1 channel soundbar. If this information was of uh, value to you in making a decision whether you buy this product or don't buy this product, please do me a favor, subscribe to our channel, and please let your friends and family know. We have a lot of how-to videos and informational articles on our website. We appreciate your time today. We hope you have a great day.